Hi, Dave here, and today we're going to check out the work of George Hull. Um, apparently, he is some kind of a senior conceptual designer, according to his um, art station. Um, and what's, so, what's so interesting about his art station is that he, he's only following like two people, so kind of a bold move there. But um, I actually do recommend you check out his website instead, because his, his art station is kind of limited. Um, in terms of his actual work, he has way more in his um, website, um, ghull.com. I will be providing the links in the description below. And he does have a very interesting style as well. Um, and he actually does a lot of traditional work with markers, with like um, fine liners or ink pens, ink pens with. Um, some marker um, shading or rendering and yeah and apparently he does like to actually use sketchup uh, i've seen other artists use sketchup before i mean for me sketchup is i've used it in architecture and i'm sure interior designers have like the same or use the same program for like quick viz quick visualization but for concept art um i've seen it but it's not super common but I do like the fact that he does show off his rough models, or rough sketch 3D models in his work. And obviously sometimes he'll uh, paint over the actual uh, SketchUp model, right? And it actually um, looks pretty good. <laughs> uh, so I did pick out like his best pieces or the pieces that really kind of appealed to me. Um, so yeah, I think I discovered his work first. Um, maybe I think I was just roaming around Pinterest and I found one of his chappy um, concept art pieces. Uh, here you can actually see his 3D model. And you can actually tell if it's done in SketchUp. Like it does have a certain look. Uh, based on if you've ever used SketchUp before, it does have a certain look. Um, but yeah, he does, he does, stylistically, he likes to add this kind of white outline in his work. Um, I'm not sure if it's because I'm not exactly sure what his background is in the beginning. Maybe he does have like um, some experience in product design. I feel, but um, I don't know, because adding this kind of white outline is very common in design fields where it's kind of like the the finishing touch. First of all, it does help uh, separate a certain part from like the background or whatever. So it helps you focus in on that certain area without having to use like a a blur kind of filter because obviously most of the time you're doing it traditionally right so it's just more efficient to like outline the whole thing with some gouache paint with some white gouache or some kind of a white out ink you know and i think it's applying the same thing here by helping it it's not just for highlights but it helps to kind of make the thing jump out a bit more um, oh yeah this was the piece that actually got me into his work, um, I and I found his like name tag here, and I eventually just researched his um, name. And this is actually kind of a great example of concept art, right? Because it's a, it's a mix of everything. Obviously, this does have th this has, or this have this has some, I think some three D in it, some photo bashing and some paint overs, and it just looks so cool for me. And again, he does this kind of white outline thing with this kind of mech. And even with this guy, um, I mean, the lighting does um, affect the way he chooses where to put the uh, the white ink thing. But I think there's also a stylistic, a style aspect to it. Um, so it's not just for highlights. Um, but yeah, this is such a cool piece. It's so kind of cohesive like everything just makes sense everything fits you know and yeah i'm actually planning to save a few of these images of this because just to kind of set a standard for myself you know <laughs> and to see what i can actually um aim for right so he did use the same model for this one but i think he was just trying to experiment with the scene um or the view right and this is actually more of a keyframe because this thing is actually kind of an action and um, yeah and when he paints he actually doesn't use a lot of texture whenever he uh, does his paint paint overs maybe he does use some like 
photo textures and all. But um, he does have a certain way of painting, very, very, I wouldn't say impressionistic, but very direct. Um, uh, I'm not exactly sure how to explain it. For example, for this figure right here, he doesn't use a lot of texture. It's just kind of like a default brush that's a bit opaque, you know? Um, and it actually looks very uh, digital in a way, and it does have an appeal. Um, I used to not like that look where it looks so photoshoppy, but um, he does make it look cool. So that's kind of nice. Um, so another kind of close up of the mech. And he did some work for uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I think this is the uh, the kind of um, the mining kind of ship, right? And he does have like a wide range of skills from like simple sketches, like traditional sketches or fast kind of quick 3D models to like highly rendered stuff, almost like actual um, illustrations. Um, although I've never actually seen him done like a full illustration, maybe that's not what he's trying to do, but he does produce very high, highly rendered um, artwork. Um, and it's very, very marketable, you know. It's the type of work that that would make someone, you know, want to explore the thing more, you know? So these are more shots or different views of the, the same ship, right? And, um, yeah, so, so I think he did use some kind of 3D model here. Um, uh, but shit. <laughs> A lot of textures, though. So maybe it's some kind of photo texture. Um, it's actually hard to see the actual painting strokes. Maybe in the highlights you can tell, but I actually can't tell which part is kind of which part is kind of painted and which part is just like part of the the 3D um, model. Oh, this one's a, more of a keyframe. Lots of blurs or blur filters, so it's kind of moving, right? Oh, he also likes to add this kind of a uh, thing in like the silhouette of his figure or ship or subject where it's um it does make it look a bit more manual or kind of done by hand because if you kind of remove this dashy kind of protrusion it does look like an actual um rendering right but just adding a bit of manual handmade strokes it adds a bit more of a painterly effect and I think it does like as much as he likes to do highly rendered stuff I think he likes to keep it he likes to add his own touch his own kind of mark so that's just my guess but uh, yeah so this is an example of his traditional um, sketches skills right done with ink pens and markers um, and even at this stage it looks pretty cool right <sighs> Um, yeah, it's actually been a while since I've done like tra traditional types of artwork or sketches even because um, first of all, it does help save like paper <laughs> and you don't have to constantly buy paper. So that's kind of a nice thing. Like all you have to do is just buy a tablet and everything is just kind of um, more efficient that way. But uh, yeah, so it does have like a nice background in like basic sketching, right? So this is another example of this kind of highly rendered stuff. Um, it's almost an illustration, but obviously it's, you know, it's a concept. And again, he does like to add this kind of extra bit of strokes in the silhouette of the whole thing. And of course, some kind of um, outline. Now he doesn't use white, but uh, he does like to add a bit of an outline for the highlights. And it helps just to make things pop a bit more. Um, and I like how it's clear. Or his shapes are kind of clear in that it doesn't look flat. Um, if you've ever seen Feng Zhu's work, he does like to use the lasso tool, right? To kind of separate a certain far a certain part, a certain part, sorry, <laughs> a certain part from the background, right? And I think with this kind of with these guns right here, it actually feels like it's in front of the, the thrusters in the back. And you can tell by the, the kind of gradient here, it just helps to make the guns pop out a bit more. So fart <laughs> oh traditional sketches again um fuck um 
very highly done and in this case it's actually hard to use it's hard to use like a soft brush or a gradient so he did use a white kind of outline to help make the uh, the guns pop out more um, and he does have a few examples here or I've included a few examples here where he did start out with a line sketch I, I believe a traditional kind of sketch and then he painted it in Photoshop um, Again, it's it's the same thing. You I know, mean, uh, the the leveling is clear. This thruster is way closer to you, so it's going to be a bit more contrasted and less uh, muted, right? Same same with these uh, these um, thrusters. Yeah, um, it just makes more sense, right? Oof! And again, the dashy kind of thing in the silhouette. Um, it helps to just make it a bit more artistic, I guess. <laughs> so I think he definitely did use some kind of 3D model here to save time. But you can still tell that he did do a paint over in some parts just to help tie things together. And obviously a lot of like flares or um, solar flares? No, am I saying it right? Fuck. <laughs> A lot of post-processing is involved here with the fog, with the lighting, with some textures. Pretty cool stuff. And again, when he paints, he does have... The brushes he used doesn't have a lot of texture in them. They're actually kind of solid. Uh, maybe with a bit of transfer or transparency in the edge to kind of go with the pen pressure. But it's very solid-ish, right? You can tell with these sorts of... Um, lighting um, things here and the ship it's very solid very digital looking right Oof. Um, again look at how the front part of the ship just pops way more than the back um, yeah Fuck. oh shit this is part of like a a gothic kind of a, not gothic but a cathedral right or a church. So a bit of photo bashing here. Pretty cool stuff. Um, and yeah, you can actually see some, a bit of the, the 3D model in, the, in these sorts of um, concepts. They're actually kind of rough concepts. Um, with some line work, with some 3D model base, and with some basic kind of coloring or photo bashing, right? Same thing here. It's a very rough concept. But it does communicate the idea. And I've heard a lot of like professional um, artists, um, concept artists, talk about this idea that it doesn't it doesn't actually have to be super rendered or finished. Cause you're there for the concept, right? So that's what you should primarily focus on. Um, Cause there will always be like highly rendered <clears throat> um, pieces and they're meant for um, illustrators, right? I mean there are people that can do both concepts and like illustrations and i think it's cool if you can do pretty much everything but if you're trying to be the idea guy i think it's okay to not fully render everything you know if you want to build your portfolio to just these sorts of things i mean i don't, I don't think it's a bad thing you know i think it shows that you're really into this whole um into this part or kind of um conceptualization you know um so anyway, more roughs, and yeah, you can see his 3D base here in SketchUp. Um, I'm actually kind of missing it because <laughs> I actually deleted my SketchUp because um, I did want to focus more on 2D and improve my painting skills, but you know, it does help save time using 3D. Um, so it's kind of a mix between a rough sketch and um, kind of a 3D base in the background. Um, a very simple coloring kind of um, style just to kind of give a rough idea you know again it doesn't have to be highly rendered you know but this one's a bit more illustrated a bit more refined I guess very concept arty kind of like the uh, where is it shit this guy it's a bit kind of high quality you know um, where is it there you go so this is the for the battleship film um oh 
And I actually did want to include this because he did... I mean, I like seeing these sort of things. I mean, it's not very common to uh, for artists to, uh, to kind of show their references and their kind of ideation or thoughts in writing or in kind of like simple notes. But, you know, I like how there's this... You can actually see how it transfers, right? Like the way a crocodile kind of... um. Um, hides the body mass until attack mode. He's kind of applying that concept into the the ships, the battleships of the the aliens in the film, right? So there's this kind of nice um, transfer of ideas, and he's actually basing his designs on reality, right? And I think it's a super cool thing. And he's doing this in um, SketchUp, I think. Um, And yeah, SketchUp I think is a great kind of 3D modeling program for rough concepts. I mean, you can do a lot of like things there. Although for me, in my experience, I've always had trouble with like curves. Um, straight edged stuff, pretty cool, pretty easy. But doing like curves and shit is super kind of... Um, maybe I just don't know how to do it, but it's not as easy for me, you know. So more 3D sketches. Um... Fuck. <laughs> I mean, it saves time. I mean, once you've made a model, you can actually just flip, or flip it around or orbit around the model and create all sorts of shots with it, right? And it just saves time. So there is this huge advantage when it comes to using a 3D. But again, for me, I need to... I'm tempted, <laughs> but I gotta focus on my 2D skills. So this one's actually a bit more refined. Something you can present. Um, and again, with his painting stuff, very almost, kind of like Sparth, not very highly textured um, when it comes to the, the painting strokes, or the paint strokes. More on, or more kind of opaque, solid, kind of clean in terms of the texture. Um, I mean, there is some roughness to it, because obviously there, there is this kind of artistic aspect, but it's a bit more clean, right? Oh yeah, so he did do some work for The Matrix, and um, I'm actually not sure how he did a lot of these illustrations. Obviously, I think this is digital, right? I think. But yeah, um, so this is more of an ink sketch with the marker I'm shading, right? Designing the ship. Looks fucking cool. So kind of... Um, I feel like it's based on some kind of insect, right? Even the... Shit. What did they call those flying things in the Matrix? Um, like, they're all based on insects. Heavily based on, like, insects, right? So I think he did, like, a line sketch in the beginning. A very complicated one, and then he painted it in um, Photoshop, I believe. Right? And what's so cool about this Matrix um, artwork is it's the color palette is so close to the actual film, so I'm not sure how he achieved that. Right? Or maybe he had like a rough shot of the film, and then and then he just kind of painted over it to help, you know, visualize it a bit more. I'm not exactly sure how he uh, achieved it. So this is another shot of his. Um, um, reference base or inspiration, basing it on some kind of insect, right? The clustering of the sentinels, all right, the sentinels. Um, it's based on like bees or any kind of insect, right? So pretty cool, um, right? I I'm sure you've seen the actual film. Like the color palette is so close to the, uh, to how it actually turned out in the film. So I'm not sure how he did it, right? Nice thumbnails here. Um, fuck. <laughs> More Matrix shots or Matrix concept artwork. Um, so maybe he did use some photo bashing here. Or maybe he just painted it. I feel like he did use some photos here. Photo textures to help with the, the pipes and shit. And again, the color palette is so close. It's freaky. Okay, so he did like a line sketch in the beginning and then he painted it in Photoshop. 
right? I mean, look at that. Fucking awesome. The line sketch is pretty complicated, though. Um, so that's very, very um, commendable of him <laughs> to be so highly... Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, I really do love... I, I, I like the fighting scene or the kind of ending scene. The main kind of fight scene in the Matrix Revolution. Revolution. Um, just seeing all those guns fire and all the sentinels kind of like cluster into like certain like lines, right? It's just so cool looking. Um, and again, the, the 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 colors are so close to the actual film. I'm not sure how he did this background. I think he's using some kind of filter here in the background, but again, I'm not sure how he achieved the same colors. Right? Oh yeah, I remember this part where uh, one of the legs, I believe, got hit, but it did. It was able to kind of uh, balance itself again. So, yeah. And I like how he does frame it, right? And I, I like how the edges of the the actual frame are kind of painterly, right? They're not super clean, not very cut. And you can look, kind of see like overlapping strokes and um, it does make it look a bit more artistic that way, right? Ta -da -da -da. By the way, I do love the mech design in the, uh, the Matrix films. They were called something like A... APU? AUP? APU? Like, um, fuck, I can't, I can't remember, I can't remember the actual acronym, but... Fucking cool. Way better than the one in um, Avatar, because the Avatar did have, like the film, did have its own kind of mech, right? But I feel like this is way better looking, design-wise, right? Whoa. And uh, just seeing this in the actual film actually gave me a bit of a, a goosebump, right? Because it's so epic looking. Oh yeah. This scene, this is just before the actual kind of tower um, fell. Um, and this whole kind of line or group of sentinels actually kind of paused for a second. And then eventually just kind of, you know, destroyed the uh, tower. Very, very um, impactful scene. Well, I think this is where they found like the, the, the general in the film. And then they were kind of clustering when they found him. And then, uh, oh shit. Did I skip it? Oh, I did skip it. Um, but yeah. Again, the color palette is so close. Um, and I like how it's actually kind of simple in terms of the, the colors. It's just the, um, a duo between the warms coming from the fires and the, the blues from the, the light sources. Or the remaining kind of light sources, right? Kind of just sparkling and shit. And he did some work from Transformers. I think he did like a line sketch in the beginning. Or he does actually do traditional sketches and then paints it on Photoshop. This is actually a very old way of doing things, but it's still very effective, you know? Like not everything has to be done in 3D. And it, it, whenever he does this sort of thing, it just shows his skills, you know? Very, very impressive. And the way he can make a sketch like into a painting, it's pretty, pretty interesting, right? Um, okay, I think he did use like a sketch and model here. You can tell he did, he did. And then he did some paint overs to just kind of refine the design a bit more. Uh, maybe some rendering in this kind of um, uh, cockpit area. And look at that, Jesus Christ. And again, it helps save you time, you know, um, adding all sorts of like elements to it. Um, I mean, you could do this with like a line sketch, but it's just going to take too long. Um, fuck. <laughs> it looks cool though. And again, it's kind of a nice advertisement for SketchUp, you know? SketchUp isn't a bad 3D program. I mean, I know it's kind of like, um, because the common complaint is, they're not really updating it as much. 
like you know they're not bringing it to the next level it's kind of the common complaint um but you know maybe they don't really need to because of its um simplicity i don't know but um anyway okay this is more of a keyframe shot um a bunch of photos perhaps a 3d model of star scream um and yeah nice shot very nice long cinematic shot here um yep yeah. uh this one's actually a grayscale painting hmm he doesn't have a lot of these in his portfolio but i was very glad to actually find this something i'm not sure what this scene is supposed to mean Uh, or where this scene is, but, um, yeah. Oh, okay, I think I remember. I think these are the oldest, like, Transformers. Or, uh, the ones that can turn into, like, dinosaurs and shit. So maybe this is kind of like, um, uh, an idea for how the prison would look like. So that's, you know, I think that's, that's what this scene means. The scene means, so. Awesome. So a nice shot of the, um, yeah. Okay, he did some work for the Blade Runner film. And again, this is, this is an example of his highly rendered stuff or concepts. Um, and again, even if it's highly rendered, he does like adding that bit of um, uh, kind of strokes in the edges of the silhouette of his whole thing. It just adds a bit of a natural painterly had made kind of touch right ah look at that sketch um done with ink and rendered with markers right hmm. again you can see the kind of a painterly stroke here in the edge and it's it's kind of his own thing he does have his own his own kind of style so I like seeing that bit of consistency in people's artwork. Um, I'm actually kind of inspired to, uh, you know, work on myself a bit more in my art. You know, trying to develop my own kind of, you know, signature style, whatever. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's just cool seeing how his work is pretty consistent, you know? And it actually does make him very, very dependable, right? Oh, I love the shot with, like, the lighting here. And it's actually not... Um, exposing the entire kind of uh, car just like a part of it like even the front part of the car is kind of in shadow the only thing that's kind of lighting it up is the the rim kind of lighting here with the, in the wheels um, the main kind of lit area is actually in the, the cockpit kind of side and yeah awesome another, another marker sketch here shit uh, maybe he did some coloring in Photoshop for the screen. I'm not sure. Maybe he does touch things up in Photoshop a bit. And again, look at that way. Look at that how he does like the edge. It he adds these extra bits of strokes, and it does add that painterly, handmade kind of look, right? Because I I don't think he wants to be fully rendered, um, because. That's probably not his thing. Um, he likes to add a bit of a human touch to his work, right? And not just a human touch, like his own kind of touch, you know, his own thing, right? That kind of sets him apart, right? Um, and again, no matter how highly rendered the image is, he still finds a way to make it kind of his. So that's kind of nice, right? So this one is the same thing, but an exploration of the like. Um, the doors, right? How they flip up. Nice. So this is his last piece that um, we're going to check out and take a look at. Um, and again, he does have like a nice base in terms of traditional um, sketching, rendering, right? Oh, he did do the screen. In markers, right? He did use a prisma color. He actually does have like a lot of markers here, like the main ones. I'm not sure what this one is called. Chart park, chart pack, chart pack, chart pack. 
it's the thickest one of all the markers. This one is a Prismacolor, this one is a Pro Marker, and this one, these two are Copic markers. Um, <laughs> and if you're in the design field, whether fashion, interior design, architectural design, um, product, industrial design, these this kind of setup is so common. <laughs> and it does have like a mini parallel kind of ruler. It's so small, by the way. It's usually a bit longer. Um, like a foot long but this one's pretty it's a mini kind of ruler so it's kind of cute um and yeah it reminds me of the you know my college days but uh, yeah it's just nice seeing his kind of workstation here or a glimpse of his workstation how it's kind of messy and i mean it's not too messy you know but it's obviously going to be a bit cluttered because obviously this is the main thing so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the art review series. I do recommend you um, check out his website because that's where you can see most of his work. Now, obviously, I did not feature his entire portfolio, but I will be linking his website in the description below. And yeah, you know, try to save some of the images or maybe pin it in your kind of Pinterest thing. Um, because a lot of his work is very, very inspiring. And for me, like his best piece is is this one. <laughs> it just looks so freaking cool. And just even like writing the, like the project name and shit and adding his like name tag. It just looks like a, an actual... It's what you would expect from like a concept artist, you know? Right? Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Art Review series. This is actually my 50th episode of the art review series and um oh. excuse me you know i've actually had um a lot of videos in my channel just i've been trying to explore like a lot of things um through my channel through my just video production and the art review series has been the longest running um series in the in the channel so it's just nice being able to reach that 50th mark and um because i did start this um i started doing the art reviews like a few months ago so i'm actually kind of excited for next year you know 2021 now i know this year has been like fucking bullshit and it's probably going to continue because you know there is this kind of push for a certain kind of future um but i think if I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Um, the point is, I'm glad that, um, you know, I reached my 50th video in this series and I hope to do more of these because I actually have like a big list of like artists, artists to review. <laughs> and I'm not even like halfway or even a quarter there, you know? So I just, I got, um, because whenever you like look at a, a kind of like art station, right? Especially in the, the main community tab page there's always this new set of artists out there that you find and um, it, it never ends you know so this could just be my longest ever my forever series you know constantly just reviewing artists and their artwork right and uh, yeah i hope you enjoyed this video um keep painting and stay free <laughs>